Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are taking a look at all of my IT infrastructure and this is my 2023 home lab tour. Let's get started. All right, so some of the stuff is going to be a pretty high level overview um, because a lot of it's not super important or interesting, but um, I'm going to give hopefully a lot of insight into all of this equipment, what it does um, and all of that kind of stuff as well. So this rack right here is my MDF. Um, I'm also going to show you uh, two IDFs one is an external building, one is my office, and those are both connected through 10 gigabit per second fiber, which you may have seen in my previous videos. Um, this is my main core switch for the entire network right now. Um, this is where all of my switches and servers connect to, as well as my other um, 10 gigabit per second switches. So those, like I said, this is multi-mode fiber, single mode fiber. Those are in different locations um, throughout this site. So. This switch is powered through PoE, and it's also powered through a 12 volt adapter that came with it, um, that's in the back of it. But So this does have redundant power, which is really cool. So this PoE power is here just as a primary power. Um, it's not even lighting up on the switch, but um, it will fail over to the 12 volt power in the back in case this does go out for whatever reason. So next thing is this Gen 1 switch port 24 from Ubiquity. This is a 250 watt. The reason I have this is because it has um, 24 volt passive PoE output. The new ones do not have that for some reason, like that one. So I have this. It's nice that I can have some access points on this switch, some access points on the other. There's more, um, sorry, there's less points of failure there because I'm not relying on a single switch for everything. Now I am up here, but these switches eventually will interconnect with each other and interconnect with a bunch of different things, which you'll see in future videos. So that is that. These are a lot of access points, cameras. These all connect to this switch. Um, I have more of clients on this, I would say, but we'll get there here in a second. So this is my pie rack that's down here. I'm going to explain that pretty soon with more pies. I have a lot more sitting around. Um, currently this one just does some backups for me. This is two 32 gigabyte drives um, and that is in a RAID 1. So really just for like random small file backups is what I have that for. But this also runs my primary DNS and WireGuard for that network. Moving down, we have a 24 port patch panel from TrendNet. This is what my fiber um, keystones into, as well as some of my ethernet connections. Eventually I'm gonna switch all of these ethernet connections into the batch panel, but I'm not there yet. So moving down, we have a Gen 2 uh, USW 24 port PoE switch. This is my, um, what used to be my main switch for everything, but right now this just has a bunch of clients. These are all servers. This is a access point. Um, and these are just random like Roku sticks and whatever. So this connects, like I said, back to one gig on this switch. The, the thing I don't like is that those only have one gig uplinks. So that's why um, I'm thinking about moving these two to just connect back to the UDM and I'll daisy chain them. But there's more points of failure there, so I'm not sure what to do. But I just don't like wasting 10 gig ports on one gig connections. Moving down, we have the UDM Pro. This is my primary router for all of my non essential devices so for example this is virtual machines that don't really matter to me as much um, and you'll see why once we move down so this is like I said the UDM Pro this also runs a lot of my unified cameras uh, I'm still running a DVR unit which actually is connected right there um, I'm still running a third-party DVR but I'm hoping to switch away from that in the future so this UDM gets a 1 gig connection up to the internet through fiber this is obviously Ethernet, but it goes to the fiber modem up to the internet. And this connection here goes into my um, larger Microtech switch. Moving down, this is server number five in my um, environment. So this one does majority of my virtualization. That's why it's so loud. Um, it has each of these are one terabyte SSDs, eight terabytes of SSD, two terabytes usable after RAID. So I believe these are all RAID ones and then it's RAID zero together. It's a really horrible setup. I should redo it, eventually I will, but um, that is that setup. So that's why I only have two terabytes of usable capacity, although I have eight drives. This switch is a dumb switch, obviously an unmanaged switch. This is for my internet connection. So coming in from my fiber provider, I go into here and this splits off. That's why I am able to have so many routers because I have a lot of static IPs um, for my fiber provider. So that all goes here. So this is technically if this switch goes down, everything goes down, but um, that's why it's just unmanaged. It's just sitting there and it works. So that's all that's to it. Going down, we have a server here. This is server number six in my environment. Um, and basically um, this has an 80 terabyte array. 
These are two boot SSDs, but this is 12 terabyte, 12 terabyte, 12 terabyte, 12 terabyte, etc. I believe it equates to about 88 terabytes or something like that, but this is all my bulk storage. It runs a few VMs. All of my servers that you'll see run Ubuntu because I really like it, so that's that. Moving down, we have a older server here that is a basically a desktop PC, as you can see. And this server is a, what used to be my primary server. It runs just a few VMs these days, but it is all of my like personal storage and stuff like that. So it's non-essential stuff that just runs and runs and runs. I forgot to mention on this server though, this is also running OPN Sense, which is my backup router. So this is the router that does everything important on this server right here. So all of my virtual machines and stuff pretty much live on that router. This Pi goes into that router through VLANs and this is what used to be deployed at a data center. Sorry, the VM used to be deployed at a data center as my router there, but it's back here obviously. So that's that. This server only has about 12 terabytes, I think. Um, there's three, four terabyte drives. So that's about all to that. Moving down, we have a UPS and another UPS. This runs all of the network stuff. This runs the servers. Um, I don't get much runtime just because of how much power these Dell servers are taking, but um, it's still enough to get me through brief outages. So that is this rack. Let's move to my office. We'll continue the tour there. Okay, so this is the office rack you've seen many times. This is the fiber that goes to MDF and that's what feeds this 10 gig Microtik switch that has eight, two and a half gig ports. The thing I do not like about this switch is that it only has one power supply, so it's not ideal, but that's just how it is. Um, below it, as you can see here, I have a Unify eight port light switch with PoE that is connected through a two gigabit aggregate connection. That way, if I'm ever testing something, I can still get a full one gig connection to my MDF. And that is because if you do the math, like there's only one thing connected. So if I have another connected, I still have two gigabits that can go through each of these cables that goes to MDF, etc. Here are three Pis that I have. This one, I do not know what it does, to be honest with you. This one is Home Assistant. This one runs my backup DNS for um, my testing network. So that is that. This is my main Mac Mini. This is an M2 Mac Mini that I got. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gig storage. It has been pretty solid. I think soon I'm going to replace it with a MacBook Pro. Um, and I'm going to replace my MacBook Air M2 with a MacBook Pro, but I'm not sure what that will look like because obviously that cost a lot of money. So we will see. Here's the back of the rack. Obviously it is terrible. Um, this is the other Pi 3 that I have in my setup. Um, this one is just for monitoring the UPS. This also runs DNS for my network that the UDM Pro is on. So um, that is the purpose of that. I have four different Pi's that do DNS is on two different networks, essentially. This is all of the cables for my desk and all of that. The reason I never showed you guys the MDF back of the rack is because it was such a disaster. Uh, I'm working on improving it, but until then, it's embarrassing to show. Here is my 2.5 gig adapter for my Mac Mini that connects that to the 2.5 gig switch. It's actually working really well. I'm able to get a little over 2.5 gigs, actually, which is fantastic. Okay, so before we move on to the next IDF, I wanted to log into Unify here to show you what I have going on because I think it's pretty cool. So... Um, these are the two server room switches, the MDF switches that you saw. Um, these all, um, these are the ones that have a lot of the connections to them. Um, next, we have the USW Flex, which is the one that was on the desk. There's a server switch in the other building, um, and that switch just runs iDRAC and a backup LAN connection to the servers that you'll see here in a second. Uh, we have the 3D printer switch which is what a lot of the security cameras record to because that device is also on that um, on that switch. Next, we have the office switch, which is what you saw. It is aggregated at a two gig connection and we have five access points here. Now, usually like in the summer when the solar stuff is set up, um, the access point will actually be outside um, on the solar setup. But for now, I'm just using it inside just to test things. Um, but I have one in my office, one in MDF, one in the uh, outside building, and one on the other side of this building here. So um, it's pretty, really good coverage actually. And the way that this is laid out is that every other access point is on every other switch. So for example, um, my office is pretty close to the MDF and those two access points are on two different switches. That way I can take off one switch, I can take offline one switch if I wanted to, and still have pretty adequate Wi-Fi coverage throughout the building, 
which has been really nice because I can do maintenance, don't have to worry about losing internet in this building. So that is that. And obviously the cameras, I'm not going to show, but that is really cool. Let's go take a look at the last IDF that I wanted to show you in this video. All right, and this is the last IDF that I have. This is a link in another building, a 10 gigabit link to be exact. This has a UPS switch and a few servers out here. Obviously, there's fiber that goes into that server and out back to the Microtech switch. And that is kind of all that's out here. Um, this is considered an IDF in my mind because it's got a 10 gig link. Um, and all of the core 10 gig switches on my network are kind of all larger connection hubs for other switches and stuff. So uh, this building actually feeds the point to point link area that you saw previously. Uh, the solar setup is fed from here. So um, that's why this is kind of an IDF as it feeds the other locations. These servers and switches and stuff are all on this UPS battery. I'm gonna eventually get solar panels because I think it'd be pretty cool to have. Um, these are all cameras and access points connected to the switch. So not much out here, but if you're curious, all that's connected is just cameras and access points to the switch. It's not much at all. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know. I might do another one next year because I'm assuming I'm gonna have a lot more upgrades and things that have been changed uh, throughout the next year moving forward. So thank you for watching. Have a great day. I will see you in the next video.